Amen. Good morning, Church of God. Parang mahina. Good morning. Amen. And it's good to be here in God's house. Amen. It's good to be in God's house and a thousands elsewhere because in this church, in God's presence, there is life. Amen. Amen and amen. And today, it's the first week of June. It's the first Sunday of June. And we remember that it is now once again our 10th month already here at Marriott Manila. Can we just praise God for that? Amen. It's a blessing. Sige, palakpakan natin si Lord. It's a blessing to be here. It's all by God's grace in favor for us to be here. And it's truly a great privilege. And thank you everyone for being here. And I believe that God will bless each and every one of us all the more. Amen? Amen. And today, who wants to be a champion? Could I see the hands? Do you want to be a champion? So just like the Golden State Warriors, are you a fan of Golden State Warriors? Were you praying for them while they were battling with the OKC Thunders? Muntik ng masipat, di ba? Muntik na maalis ang crown for the Golden State Warriors, but they continued fighting for that crown of the championship and and they're now on their way to the finals once again with the Cavaliers. And you know what? These are champions. And you know what? How did they become champions? They committed all their lives practicing every single day, uh, giving their best, their high performance game in every single game. That's why they became champions. And all of us would love to experience this championship in our lives. And that's our title for today. Our title, I'm going to do a series for the month of June and maybe for the half of July. And our title of the series is The Life of a Champion. A Life of a Champion. And for today, our, uh, our focus is on a moment of God's favor in your life. Do you want to experience a moment of favor in your life? Amen. I want to experience that kind of favor that God had given to these people and to the people of the Bible. And who's, who are we going to talk about today? If you have your Bibles with you, could you open your Bibles in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. And it says here, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill your horn with oil and go. And I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. Could we, could we bow down our heads and let us pray? Hallelujah. See, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we invite your presence to be in this place. Oh God, we don't want to do this by might, nor by power, but only by your spirit. Today, Lord, we ask for your anointing. We ask for your, your wisdom. And Lord God, we want a moment of favor in our lives today, Lord God, because your favor changes everything for our lives. And right now, Lord God, open our hearts, Lord God, open our minds, Lord God, and may we just enjoy your presence and may we be blessed, Lord God, because you are in this place. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen and amen. Can we just give God our very best clap offering? Hallelujah. So, who is the Bible character that we're going to talk about today? The Bible character that we're going to talk about today, it's not Saul, it's not Samuel, but it is David. Do you know David? Yes, most of us know David. When we were still kids, we already know the name David, and he is a champion. He experienced a life of a champion because at one moment, he killed Goliath, right? It was a David and Goliath thing, a, a giant. He slayed it with his own hands and he became a champion. And not only that, he became the king of Israel. Wow, what a life of a champion. But before we look at that championship round of David, where did David start? Who was David before Goliath? 
who was David before he became the king of Israel. And you know what? David was just a shepherd boy. He was just taking care of his father's sheep. But now it says now. What's with the word now? Suddenly now, God was preparing something for him. Suddenly, Saul was rejected as king and he commanded Samuel to look for him, uh, an anointed one, a young one who will become the future king of Israel. And you know what? This prearrangement of the Lord, David knew nothing about it. While he was taking care of the sheep, he knows nothing about it. So how do we become a champion? How do we become a champion? A life of a champion requires commitment. Could you say that with me? Commitment. Could you ask your seatmate, are you committed? Wow, I pray that we are all committed because just like the Golden State Warriors, for them to be there, they need to be committed on it. To be committed on really achieving it and accomplishing the goal and winning the finals so they may beat the Cavaliers in the next games to come. And what is commitment? Commitment means staying on it no matter what. That's commitment. No matter what storm you may face, no matter what problems you may face, no matter what struggle you're facing, if God placed you there, don't move. Just stay on it. And commit on it. And that produces champions. Amen? Amen. So, are you excited to hear God's word today? If you're excited to hear God's word today, could you shout amen? Amen, amen and amen. So, where should we commit our lives today? Where should you commit? Commit when you are a nobody. Commit when you are a nobody. So, was David a nobody? Let's check in the next verses if David was a nobody. So here comes Samuel. He could not disobey God. He fears to disobey God. He's a prophet. And he just followed God. He just followed the command of the Lord and says here in verse 4, So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? So when Samuel came to Bethlehem, he's a high official, he's a high prophet. Everybody fears him because the Lord directly speaks to him. They were so afraid and the elders were there to meet him. And in this verse, do you see the name David? Is David in the picture? So we could say, we could see that David is not part of the elders, right? So even if a high official, Samuel, a prophet, came to their place, David was also not affected of it. It doesn't bother David. David doesn't care about it. Why? Because maybe he's a nobody. So just like in the APEC week, you know the APEC week, right? When the leaders, the presidents all over the world came to our country, our country were you invited? We're not invited, right? I'm also not invited. Why? Because I'm not part of the leadership of the Philippines. Who am I to be there? Or are we affected by it, right? We're not affected. The only thing that affected us was the traffic, right? It's only the traffic that affects us. Why? Because who are we to be there? Who are we to be invited by the president to be part of the APEC week, right? So it, it goes the same with David. David was not part of the leadership. We could say that he's a nobody. So what, what happened next in verse 5, it says, And he said, he said, Samuel said to the people, to the elders, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Okay, so David was not part of the leadership. David was not part of the elders. How about in his family? Was he playing an important role? Was David there to prove something? Is, is he important? Let's see if David was important. Why? Because in verse 6, when, when Samuel was asking for the sons of Jesse, Jesse, present me your sons. Present me the best of the best of your sons and I will anoint them and they shall be soon the king of Israel. So did David come out at the first pick? Guess what? Who was the first pick in verse 6? It says, so it was when they came that he looked at Eliab. 
So it's not David. David was the, not the first pick. It was Eliab. Eliab was the first pick. He was the eldest son. He was the best of the best of the sons of Jesse. Kaya siya yung present ni Jesse kay Samuel. Surely, says Samuel, the Lord's anointed is before him. So in the eyes of Jesse, Eliab is the winner. In the eyes of Samuel, uh, Eliab is the winner. He's the best. He's the number one pick. But I tell you today that winning today doesn't mean you're already the champion. It doesn't mean that you win the fight today, win the fight tomorrow. It doesn't mean you're already the champion. Why? Because in verse 7 it says, the Lord said to Samuel, Hey Samuel, do not look at his appearance. I know Eliab looks good. You know, I know that Eliab is macho, right? Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. He's not the one that I'm looking for. He's not the one I like. Why? For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outside appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So today, before we proceed, let's check also our hearts. Is our hearts right before the Lord today? So Eliab was rejected. He's not, the, he's not the option of the Lord. And now Jesse presented the second best, his second eldest son. But what happened? He was once again rejected by the Lord. No, that, not that one, Samuel. Then the third best, the third pick, he, Jesse presented it. But once again, He's not chosen. So what happened next in verse 10? Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Wow. From the, from the seven sons, nobody was chosen. They are not the ones that God is looking for. So who is the Lord looking for? What is God searching for? Sino ba hinahanap ni Lord? In verse 11, it says, Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Are all the important people here? And Jesse said, Then he said, Jesse said, There remains yet the youngest. Oh, there's this nobody. The youngest, he's just a kid. It's all right, leave him there. He's just a kid. He's just a youngster. And what he's doing, what is he doing? And there he is. He's just keeping the sheep. He's doing nothing. Just let him be there, right? The ceremony started without David, so it means he's not important. He's not important. He's a nobody. Why? He's forgotten. And, he say, and his father is saying, he's just young. Allow him just to play around. But what did, what did Samuel say? Send him and bring him here, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Wow. From a nobody here comes the drum roll. They're all waiting for this special person, this youngster, this nobody. They're waiting for him. And what made God stay? What made God wait for this young man, this nobody? What did God made? What did God, why did God wait for this young man? Why? Because David committed when he was a nobody. He committed himself being a nobody. Ano ba yung ginagawa ni David? This is what he was doing. He was just taking care of his sheep. While taking care of the sheep, he was playing his harp. He was giving his best. And you know what? Committing and staying as a nobody are two different things. When you stay as a nobody, you're good with average. You're just there to be there. So nothing's happening. You just want to stay as a nobody. But when you commit as a nobody... It means you give your best even when the task is less. Amen? So can you ask your seatmate right now, ganun ka ba? I pray ganun tayo that even when your task is less, you give your best, right? So that God may wait for us and stay and not leave until He had chosen us. And I have a story for you. You know what? When we went to Japan, we met, we, we met this old Japanese guy. And his work, I think, was at Honda. And his work basically was washing, wiping the, the windows of brand new cars of that manufacturing company. That's, that's all he does. 
just wipe the cars, the window cars of brand new cars before it's, it will be released. So what happened, he's already gone old. Uh, he's in a retirement age. So the company needs to retire him already. So he's getting old. It's just right to just take your rest and we, we're going to find somebody else to take your place. So that happened. So a couple of days after that, they found a young professional to do the job. They're gonna wipe, he's going to wipe the, the windows of brand new cars. That's all he's going to do. But suddenly, weeks after, this, this company recalled this old Japanese guy. So nagulat ngayon yung old Japanese guy. Why was he being recalled? And the Japanese guy, the, the company told this old man, go back to work. Nobody could do what you could do. Nobody could wipe the windows of our cars as good as you do. Wow, right? So when, uh, when a car uh, comes out of the manufacturing company, what do you see first? You see the whole car, right? You don't say, wow, the windows are beautiful. You don't say that. Why? Because it's, it's a job of a nobody. You don't take notice of that. It's so less. It's, it, you don't take uh, more importance of the windows. But there are people who take notice of those simple things and they appreciate it. And what happened to this old guy, he was rewarded for it and, and he was still working for that company. Wow, right? It's great. When we, when we commit on being a nobody, there's blessing. And if the people around you doesn't see you doing it, it is God who sees your every work. Amen? Your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. We just give God our very best clap offering. And that's the same thing that David did. He committed on being a nobody. That's why right now, he's already on the process. Do you want to be on God's process for your life? I want to be on the process of God fixing my whole life. And now, David is on the process of God moving in his life. So what happened in verse 12, it says, so he sent and brought him in. Now, once again, now what's, what's with this word? Now, he was ruddy. Ruddy meaning blooming. Pwede mo ba tignan yung katabi mo ngayon and check if he or she is blooming. If he or she is blooming, could you just give him a high five? So thank you for the appreciation and Ang bawat isa ay blooming dito sa church. Praise God. And that was David. Now David was ruddy. He was blooming. Suddenly he was blooming with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, rise. Arise, anoint him for this is the one. For siguro for a couple of days, David didn't look good. Maybe he's, he looks like an uh, ugly duckling. And suddenly now, he was blooming. Just like this guy. Do you know this guy? Do you know who this is? So, doesn't look that much good. But after puberty, wow. When puberty hits you, it becomes George Clooney. Right? So, sikat na sikat yan si George Clooney. So, dati ganyan siya. Medyo hindi pansinin. Suddenly, wow. Handsome man. And I have my own version of that. So, when puberty hit me, this is me. And then, so not to boast, but puberty, when puberty hits you. So, usong uso yan sa Facebook ngayon. And, and, and David experienced this as well, right? David experienced this as well. In the couple of days before, ugly duckling. And then suddenly, now, while he was on the process of God in his life, he became blooming. And you... Who wants, who wants this moment of their lives? <laughs> ayaw, ayaw mag Baka sabi, feeling ko ugly ako. <laughs> so, we want this moment of favor in our lives. You know what? Sometimes, we may miss this moment of favor. How do we miss this moment of favor when we say, um, I'm too busy, Lord? That's not for me, Lord. I'm too busy with my family. I'm too busy with, with my business. I'm too busy with my work. It's not for me, Lord. And that's how we miss our moment of favor in our lives. And sometimes we say, oh, I'm unqualified. You know what? That's not for me. 
There are better leaders in church. Use them, Lord, not me. I'm unqualified. Or on the other hand, we say, I'm surely the best. I'm, I'm qualified. Lord, I'm perfect. Use me. Right? These, these three things, things that comes to our head makes us miss our moment of favor. And you know what? David didn't have these thoughts. That's why what happened to him in verse 13, it says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Wow. From a nobody, now on the process of God moving in his life, in the midst of all the important people, in the midst of all his brothers, now he became somebody. From being unqualified, just a shepherd boy, now he has become qualified. And right now, while he was on the process of God, God won't leave until he was chosen. That's what happens when we experience our moments of favor in our lives. Why? Because God's favor makes everything work for you. God's favor makes everything, everything work for you. So do you want God's favor for your life? Amen. I want God's favor for my life. Just like how David experienced it. And now, we continue to the story. What happened to the next story in verse 14, it says, when, when David received the power of God, suddenly, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. So it's also possible pala to lose God's favor in our lives. That's why we need to take care of it. And you know what? Saul was the champion of that time. He was the king of Israel, but because of pride, he didn't have the right attitude. He became foolish. He became evil. He was rejected by the Lord, and he lost the favor of God in his life. So he was experienced a distressing and troubling spirit. So what happened to him in verse 15 to 16, it says, And so servants said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful player on the harp and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. Wow, what a great opportunity. Right now, all of a sudden, they didn't look for a drummer. They didn't look for a guitarist. They were looking for a harp player. And who could that be? Wow, we could see that God is orchestrating everything. When we are in God's favor, God orchestrates everything for you. And not only that, in verse 17, So Saul said to his servants, provide me now. Once again, the word now comes to our lives. Provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. So David, uh, Saul could have disapproved it. David could say, just give me a singer, not a harp player. But, they, but Saul approved it. And when we're on God's favor, God opens a door for our lives. God orchestrates everything and opens a door. And who could they pick? Who could they possibly pick to play the harp for Saul? In verse 18, it says, Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite who is skillful in playing. Wow, buti na lang si David was committed on being a nobody. Why? Kasi kung hindi siya committed doon, baka hindi siya nakita, hindi siya napick. And not only that now, he's not just a good player, but because the presence of God was, his, was with him, he's now a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. You remember that handsome person? Then puberty hits David. Wow, awesome. And the Lord is with him. Now they found David. So for all the good players of harp in the land, how could they land on to David? Just like in the NBA, right? Have you seen a PBA player in the NBA? Did you see Tau Lava in the NBA? Panahon nyo ba si Tau Lava? Si Tau Lava, si James Yap. Do you know James Yap? The PBA players. So do you see them in the NBA? 
No, right? Yes, they are good in our country, in the Philippines, but you need to be exceptional for you to be part of the NBA. And that's how David was experiencing at that time, right? He was just a good player. But when God moved with him, everything else just followed because God's favor was with him. That's why commit on God's process for your life. Commit on God's process for your life. You may not know everything that's happening in your life. You may not know what's going on in our church. You may see, it may seem that nothing is happening, but you don't need to know everything. I don't need to know everything. It's God's job for my life. All I need to do is to commit on God's process for my life that I may be a winner. Amen? Do you want to be a winner? I want to be a winner. And what happened from that day forward, so in 1 Samuel 16, verses 19 to 20, it happened. Therefore, Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son, David, who is with the sheep, a nobody. And Jesse took a donkey, the father of David. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, a young goat, and sent by his son, David, to Saul. So here comes the father being a father, a proud father. Hey, David, bring some wine, bring some food, bring a goat. And David could have said in his mind or could have said to his father, Dad, Cornian, don't bring me Baon anymore. I'm already big. And maybe the people of Seoul are rich people. They don't want seeing a goat with me going to, to Seoul. Or maybe David could say, Dad, I'm already a winner. I don't need to follow you anymore. I'm already a winner. I could do it myself. Remember, you forgot about me. Right, Dad? You forgot about me. But David didn't say that. He kept his right attitude. Why? What if ang nangyari sa kanya is a Steve Harvey moment? Right? He thought he's already the winner. Pero minsan sa life natin, there comes a test. Bigla na test, we're not ready for it. What if we showed a wrong attitude? What could have happened to David's life? And surely that's what happened to David in verse 21. So David came to Saul and stood before him. David stood before Saul and Saul was examining him from top to bottom, looking at his attitude. And maybe at that moment, he may be rejected by Saul. I don't like this guy. Maybe if the wrong attitude suddenly burst out with David, he could be rejected. But David had the right heart. David had the right attitude. And what happened? Saul loved him greatly and he became his right hand, his armor bearer. All the days of his life, David will, will be with Saul. So what happened in verse 22, then, Jesse, then Saul sent to Jesse saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. Wow. A king finding favor on a nobody. Who is David? Who in the world is David? Just like in Duterte's campaign right now. right? Who are we to be part of his cabinet? Were you invited to be part of his cabinet? Right? I'm, not, uh, I'm not invited to be part of his cabinet. Why? Because who am I? Who are we? And we recall, maybe we're just a nobody. We're, just, we're still on the process of things. We're just a one-time, big-time winner, and that's it. So this is who David is. He's a nobody. He's just on the process. He just, he's just a winner. But because of God's favor, a moment of favor produces a champion. A moment of God's favor in your life, no matter where you're coming from, it produces champions. And finally, what does God produce in our lives? What happens? What does God give because of His favor? It says in verse 23, And so it was, whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. So there are so many good players in the land for sure who knows how to play the harp. It's not only David. There are a lot of people who could play the harp. But when David plays it because of God's favor, what happened, then Saul 
would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. David could do what others could not. He, when he plays the harp, someone could be healed, someone could be refreshed, the evil spirit could get away from Saul. Not everybody could do that. But David could do it because God's favor is upon him. And everything else worked well for David. That's why God is telling us right now, if you want to experience a life of a champion, if you want to experience that moment of favor in your life, commit on the now. Commit on the now of your lives. You may feel that you're a nobody. You may feel that you're just on the process of things. You may feel that you're, you're already a winner. But God is telling you wherever, whatever stage you are right now, commit on the now of your lives that you may experience God's favor. Not only for you, but for your whole family. Just like this guy over here. Do you know this guy? Who knows this guy, right? It's Manny Pacquiao. And we all know the story. We've seen him in the, in the news saying that he came from nothing. He came really from nothing. What did he say? I want to let the people know that there is God who can raise someone from nothing. Someone from being a nobody, just a shepherd boy, from a nobody, from nothing into something. And that's me. I came from nothing into something, and I owe everything to God. He gave me this blessing, and it's all credit to the Lord. And He's the best example for a person who came from a nobody into a champion. And it's great that God is moving in his life. And truly, without the belts, without everything, just experiencing God's favor in his life, just accepting Jesus in his life, he's already a champion. But of course, all of us wants to live a life of a champion. God is telling you right now, commit on the now of your lives. Commit. For so many times, so for so many years, we keep on turning to the right, turning to the left. We look, look for so many options. But God is asking you right now, Pwede ba today? Could you just commit with me? Because God commits if you commit to make you a champion. All for the glory of God. So if that's you, as we are preparing for our communion, if you're saying, Lord, I want to start committing my life to you. I've been far away. I've been doing so many other things. But today, Lord, I want to experience this life of a champion you're telling me right now. And if that's you, I invite you to bow down your heads and pray to the Lord and commit your lives once again to Him. So as you prepare the communion, freely pray to our God.
I give myself away so you can use me. Sing this with all our hearts. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Lord, Lord God, truly, Lord God, we are just nobody. Lord God, we are nothing, especially, Lord God, without you. We are nothing. But, Lord God, with the power, Lord God, of your death, here we are, Lord, allowing you, Lord God, to use our lives to be used mightily by you. Use us, Lord God, here we are telling you, Lord, we surrender all our hearts, our minds, our lives, not only our lives, but our whole family is here, Lord, to commit ourselves because we believe in your power that you could turn nothingness, you could turn nobodies into champions because that's you, Lord God. That's your power given to us. And Lord God, as we take our communion today, allow us, Lord God, to once again experience this power of yours from this day forward. It says in God's word, for you receive from the Lord at which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's all partake of the bread. Lord Jesus Christ, this, is, this communion service is not just a ceremony for us, Lord. This is a remembrance of your death, Lord God. This is a remembrance of your sacrifices for us, that there's power in your death. That's why we proclaim today that we are more than conquerors. We are already victorious because we have your power in our lives. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do for as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's all drink of the cup. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for dying on the cross. We may, we may not understand it fully, Lord God, but there's power in it, Lord that's why, Lord, if we don't commit, we miss this moment of favor. We miss this moment of your power in our lives. If we don't speak it up, Lord God, your power, Lord God, sayang, Painon, yung kapangyarihan na ito, Painon. That's why, Lord, Lord, we ask for that courage. We ask for that confidence. We ask for anointing, Lord God, to be upon our lives, upon our families, upon this church, Lord God that our city, Newport City, may be transformed into a born-again city. Lord God, here we are. Use us mightily, all for your greater glory. Hallelujah. Today, as an act of worship, let's all raise up our tithes to the Lord. These tithes and offerings is not from us. It is from the Lord. And this is our act of worship as we give it to Him. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up and raise up our tights. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we commit our finances to You. Lord God, for in our hands, it is nothing, Lord. It is nothing. But when we give it to You, either we are empty, either we are full, when we commit it to You, Lord God, you could use it in so many mighty ways, Pahinon. 
That's why we give it to you, Lord God. This is not ours. We just give it to you. This is yours to be used all for your greater glory. And Lord God, thank you for this congregation. Thank you for this church, Father in heaven. Thank you for bringing us here, Lord God. It's no accident. That's why we are here. And Lord God, thank you for your wonderful word. It's not my word, Lord God. It's your word. And your word has power. Your word has anointing. Lord God, your word has favor. And your word has changed every life of us today, Lord God. And right now, you will never be the same, fine one, because you're going to turn nothingness. You're going to turn nobodies into champions. We experience and we claim a life of a champion and we claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. God bless everyone. Have a blessed week. See you next Sunday.